All right, everybody. Hello, hello. Yeah, most uh, most contract compliance policies the office have are a direct result of me. I'm very sorry. Okay. Good morning. Today we are going to focus on time management. So let's do something similar to what we did yesterday. <clears throat> and when you hear time management, let's talk a little bit about what that means to you. And then uh, obviously I can talk about time management for a long time, um, which is kind of against the idea of time management, but um, I wanna hear you know, what it means to you, what, what's, what, how it speaks to you, and then we'll kind of uh, elaborate on some of those concepts, okay? When I say time management, what, what's the immediate reaction that you have? Freedom and gaining my life back. Interesting, that's kind of the, the opposite of what some people would say, I, I, but I'm proud of you, I like that. Well, Bill, I, I've been in PC before, and so now I understand it. Before, it felt like <laughs> shackles, um, but no joke, it's more freedom. It allows me to actually define and organize my life in such a way that I can have a life without getting, without losing control of it, because without time management, you will lose control, and you will not have the life that you set by design, because you haven't set it by design. All and right, class dismissed. <laughs> and I, well, and I think like Shauna's saying, you'll feel like guilty if you're not working when you're with your family. Whereas if you manage your time, you say, I've had my work time. Now I have my family time. I'm, you know, I'm focused on my family or whatever it is that's important to you. But I that's think a great, that concept is one I definitely want to talk about this morning, Pam. Uh, yeah. Continue. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I think it is you telling yourself how your day is going to go rather than just letting it happen. Mm, yes, like that. What else? I was gonna say that too, being intentional and purposeful. Um, just knowing what you need to do and doing it. Okay. I like everything I'm hearing. Who else wants to share? I would like to probably say being very organized with your, your time and just what you're going to do with your day, you know, have it written down and your calendars and your schedule. Um, that way, you know, you actually get done with what you say you're going to do. I like that. I like that. You know, it's, it's all about, you know, we've heard the bold law. We don't sell real estate. Our job is not to sell real estate. Our job is to follow our calendar. Right. And the most important thing we can do is get the right stuff on the calendar and the wrong stuff off the calendar, right? So how do we know what to put on our calendar? How do we know what the most critical items are? Well, it, well, it's the stuff that you told us to do that'll, that'll make us rich. <laughs> <laughs> our it's big 20 rule. Yeah, yeah, Th thank you, Jan. It, that's exactly where I was headed. It's uh, remember the 80-20 80, 80, rule, which is, 20% of our activities yield 80, excuse me, yield 80% of our results. Therefore, 80% of our activities yield 20% of our results. So don't hear me say that the 80% is not important. It just doesn't move your business forward to the degree that the other stuff does. By the way, the 20% of your business <clears throat> is lead generation, lead following, lead follow-up, going on appointments, negotiating contracts and script practice and role play everything else even things like going to the inspection and going even going to the closing even right these are things that they should be viewed as secondary i know it would sound ludicrous for you to say i'm going to skip the closing because i didn't hit my goals for the week but in the long run you would benefit from that okay so with uh when you say that uh shana when it when it yields freedom i want to i want to i want to mix that in with another idea which is okay. the idea of kind of winning the day so right. and this also kind of mixes with what pam was saying because one of the things that i struggled with for a long time way longer than i should have was this idea that I didn't, I didn't know what winning the day was. I didn't actually even know what I was supposed to do every day. And therefore, even though I worked a lot, right, 
when I'd stop working, I felt guilty that I wasn't working when I was at home with my family. And that caused me to have some anxiety and, and more stress than was necessary. And I wasn't completely present at home either. And then the other way could happen too. When you are um, at work and you feel like you're not giving your 100% when at home, then you're not, you're not in peak performance in either place, right? If the only way you're gonna be in peak performance in either place is to be super stringent with your time and say, hey, these are the things I gotta do today to win the day. When they're done, work's over. Now I'm gonna go focus on something different and I'm not gonna feel guilty that I'm not at work because work is done. And now I'm gonna go be present with my family or whatever else you gotta do, okay? And that way, you know, like uh, Gary Keller talks about in The One Thing, it's not, it's not um, work-life balance. He actually calls it work-life counterbalance, right? Which is, you're never gonna be able to like go back and forth like perfectly this way, right? There's gonna be some swings where you're working a little bit more than you're used to, so that you can go create the freedom to go on vacation for two weeks or something, right? So it's, there, it's generally more uh, to the extremes, but it's only gonna work correctly if you know what you have to do to win. Does that make sense? So in all of our, um, in all of our MREA2 uh, charts that we've created one-on-one, -on -one, the, there's a tab that's called Big Rocks. So if you go back in and, and look for big rocks, I suppose you guys already know what your big rocks, but the big rocks in my opinion are how many listings do I need to have at all times? How many contacts do I need to have each day, right? And what are my appointment goals for appointments gone on and, and listings taken, whether it be buyer or seller listings taken? That right there is gonna help you understand if your business is winning or not, right? And that right there will help you control how much time you've got to allot to all these tasks so that you can win that and then go win outside of real estate as well. Does that kind of, um, Pam, does that, do you feel like that addresses what your thought was? Yes, I, I, sorry, I was having a little technical issue. So <laughs> I was getting some help on that, but yeah, for what, what I heard you say, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, talk to me a little bit about, um, I also want to, I also want to talk about this idea of reactive or intentional time or, or business. Okay. Um, I was speaking to someone the other day um, and they, they were in, they're in the habit of essentially addressing everyone else's concerns the minute they come in, regardless of how important they are. Right. And when you live in that zone, you're, you're, you're always gonna feel um, unsettled in your primary tasks, right? If I, and, and one of the challenges that I made was, and, and I know this sounds crazy, you guys are gonna probably think I'm a nut, but I said, why don't you just let the phone go to voicemail? <laughs> okay, let the phone go to voicemail Oh my God, Bill, how could we do, possibly do that? Okay, I got, I, it's gonna, it gets better, guys. Okay, in with the, when the way they leave their voicemail, you're gonna be able to tell, number one, what the subject of the call would have been, and you can determine whether it's important or not, and the way that they're speaking, right? Are they speaking with a lot of anxiety? Are they speaking, or are they speaking like it was just on their list and they had to get it done, right? Like I got a, I got something on my list today that quite frankly, it doesn't need to get done today. It needs to get done probably before the end of the week. So if I leave a message for that guy and I say, Hey, John, give me a ring when you get a second. That doesn't mean he listens to that. And he says, Oh, that goes to the bottom of the list where it should go. Right. Because I'm busy and he's busy. I'm just checking it off my list. Right. And he'll get to it when it, with it, when it fits into his world. Now, if I called him and I said, John, I got to speak to you before lunchtime. I got something really important. He's going to call me before lunchtime. You follow what I'm saying? So, and by the way, when you're in the middle of negotiations, that's also a nice tactic because you can see the person might give away their, their, their hand, right? So I just challenged this person, hey, just listen to the voicemail. And if you, if you can't help yourself, call him right back. But today we're gonna to do two minutes. 
And next week, we're going to do 10 minutes in between the time you call them back. And the next week, we're going to do half an hour. Just to make sure that you understand that you, in fact, are the one that's in control of your time. Okay? Because presumably, at all times of the day, you should be working on the most important task at hand. So when some outside interference comes into your world, which we live in the real estate world, it's very chaotic. I get it. Right. The 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 um, the thought pattern should be I'm currently working on the most important thing that's going to grow my business, um, give get me money, help my family, et cetera. And this person is this is an attempted distraction. Now, which one do I need to tend to first? See what I'm saying? All right, what do you hear when you hear me say that? Prioritize. I see you saying being intentional about your time. And as we've talked in the past, that's very difficult for me. But, you know, another way to do that, you know, I hate texting, but, you know, I can, if I tee my clients up, to appreciate my calendar and let them know in advance i don't answer the phone before 12 o'clock but if it's really important send me a text but i'll call you right after 12 o'clock then that would be intentional with my clients and my calendar and allow me not to take those phone calls that i always take uh yeah yeah you just got to keep in mind that in a weird way, they don't really care about you and your calendar. They just care about their stuff getting handled. Right? So you don't want them to feel like, I may not even bring that up unless it becomes a potential problem. Right? So I, I, might, I might not say, like, for example, I, I have been taking Friday night to Saturday night off in my business for 10 years. Okay? So Friday night to Saturday night, no email, no texting, no showings, no nothing. Okay. And um, I only, I didn't bring that up to every single prospect when I first met them. I dealt with it on a case by case basis with as much detail as I felt was necessary. And right after I told them, I told them how their issue was going to get addressed if they had one. I'd say, Hey, this is who you can call. Um, they know everything I know. They're better at it than me. Just let them handle it. Okay, so um, remember that, quite frankly, they don't really care about your, I know this sounds insensitive, but they care about themselves. They care about their own transactions and the details of their transactions. So just make sure they understand how you're going to get it done. But it's going to get done with you, your being in control. Now, but, I, but I just want to... If you're not answering text messages or phone calls or emails, how is it that you're communicating that to them? Um, well, I have a away message on my phone. And if I'm gone for more than, an, more than a day, I have an, an, uh, an email responder, an auto email responder. So you could always do that. Okay. What um, I'm taking from it is it's pretty much controlling the chaos. Because you say that, you, well, in real estate, it's very chaotic you know, from start to finish. And if you control the chaos, you then start to know that everything isn't an emergency. So it's not that we're not gonna get back with them. It's more of, let me prioritize, let me see what it is that they want, you know, and then respond accordingly, opposed to always being at their beck and call. That's what I take from it. That, that's exactly right. And plus the, there's, there's also a lot of parties involved, right? So let's say like, Andrew, I know Andrew's got a message he needs to get to me quickly, but I'm not particularly ready for Andrew until I talk to Kim, because Kim's got to tell me something that I need in order to prepare properly to talk to Andrew, right? So there's no, what's the point in saying, Andrew, I still don't have the information I need, right? Just let it go to voicemail. If you feel super guilty about it, text the person and say, hey, Andrew, I'm finishing up an appointment in about an hour. I'll call you then. They don't expect you to have one client. They expect you to be a busy professional, right? When was the last time you tried to call your accountant and got him on the phone the first try? Right? They expect you to have more than one client. Okay. All right. Now I, I have made one observation, which is I think this is the, the highest attendance at a call in a while. 
So time management seems to be a, a hot topic. What else um, are you guys experiencing with respect to time management? So sometimes I'll make my calendar. It's more of me following it. I'll spend all that time detailing it and then come Monday, Ebony does what Ebony wants to do in the order that I want to do it. And I have to, I have well, to good. get better at that. that. That's the way it should be. But that stuff, your calendar is what should tell you what to do, not your, not your like, your, you know, reactionary gut, right? Exactly. So you need to, the, that's why I think win, like this concept of winning the day is so incre incredibly important because you know that it just feels so much better when you finish, you win the day, right? If you want to work out, work out. If you want to um, go for a run, go for a run. If you need to call somebody in particular, how, how are we measuring the winning of the day? That's why we talked about a long time ago, this idea of um, writing down at the beginning of the day, the most important tasks that need to get done, the top priorities. They could be real estate related or otherwise, but isn't it just an awesome feeling to check it off and say, cool, did that one, right? It's like a jolt of energy. And then you're at closer to peak performance when you're dealing with the next round of people, right? I always think of it in, in the sense of control. Who's in control here, right? I took this job so I'd have control. Not this one, but I got into real estate so I could be in control. Because I was tired of other people telling me what to do with my time. And I wanted to be what I wanted to be in charge. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, and um, I mean, I sort of feel like that's true too, because um I don't know how to explain it, but I, I feel like I feel like when I'm getting stuff done, I feel like everything else kind of falls into place. I feel like people realize it and um life is a lot more relaxed and um you just feel way better you feel like wow i like accomplished everything that i said i was going to do and then um i don't know things just start falling into place like all these little lucky deals that people keep calling me about like leases and things like just by posting this the uh social media and just going through the list and it's just weird how things happen like that <laughs> Well, I, I just want to, I'm, I'm super proud of you, but I do want to pick one word apart that you said. Yeah. It's not luck, man. You earned every bit of that. Whether you earned it since you got your real estate license and you started making real estate related social media posts, that's part of it, yes. But you also earned it from when you were young and growing up and being a responsible, smart, hardworking guy, right? And people are taking note. And then when you go back to the people that love and support you and your friends from, you know, a variety of places in the past, they say, Alexa, oh, my gosh. Stop. What, what's that? Hey, Andrew's a smart, smart dude. I think, you know, he's very responsible. He works hard. He's a man of integrity. And I believe he could guide me in this real estate process. If you were just a, 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 a moron growing up, then, then you'd have to fight that battle every day. Right? Yeah. Okay, so is there anyone on the call that uses their their morning, uh, do you have a morning routine? You wanna talk about morning routine for a second? Who benefits from a morning routine? Is there something that you've started to do at some point in the past and now it kind of, it feels weird if you don't do it? Well, when the kids are back in school, I'm up by 6.30, I uh, get Kylie to school, Karen Cooper have a ride to school when they were going to school and knowing that I have my 8.30 call, I sneak in and work out there uh, mm -hmm. beforehand. And if I don't, it happens at night, but it has to be one or the other, or I get a quick jolt of a 15 minute routine really quick in knowing that I'll do my 40 minute tonight. And uh, then I start my day from there. So it just puts my head right um, journaling and reading my um, Bible in the first thing in the morning before I get out of bed and not looking at my phone or social media media is my go-to it has to be it sets my mind right also so those are just some of the things that are non-negotiable for me I love that I love that you get it goes back to this concept of control you yeah. got two. You know, look I, I'm I'm not great at this I'll be honest okay but when I lay in bed, I can either get out of bed 
and go do the things that I know are important, like pray and get a cup of coffee and have a little quiet time and, and uh, work out and all that stuff and, and read my, through my goals and all that. Or I can go to my telephone and find out if anyone else needs me. Right. It's almost like, it's almost like we we have this this idea in our head that like wants to be needed so much that we go to the place where we would find out if we're needed, right? Rather than just doing what you know you need to do. And then when you accomplish what you need to do, you make yourself available to anyone else that needs you. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you think, go ahead. No, I was just saying yes. Okay, so by the way, if you do not have a, uh, a 411 or you do not have a, uh, a calendar organized um, or you're not sure if it um, is, is uh, as good as it could be or should be, um, if you feel comfortable, please feel free to send it to me. I'll take a peek at it and let you know um, what, whether, what I think about it. Um, all the things that a calendar should include the following things, okay? If you have a blank calendar, this is the first thing you should put on it is off time, okay? When are you not going to be doing real estate, right? That, that would include, uh, you know, whatever weekend time you give to your family, it would include what, whatever, it, whatever is important, right? So if it's dinner with the family, if it's picking up the kids up from school, whatever it may be, okay, off time. The next thing you should put on the calendar is your planning time. The planning time, like usually Sunday night for about an hour or so, I sit in front of my computer, I kind of take stock of what I accomplished this previous week. I look at what I need to accomplish in the, in, the, in the upcoming week. I rearrange my schedule if necessary. I write some notes to myself and it's kind of my planning time. It, it's basically like, how am I doing? What do I need to improve? What did I do well? What did I get caught up in? What distractions got in my way? And it's like almost like a weekly reset. So when is that going to happen? Personally, I find that to be helpful on Sunday. Okay, get my week started off with the right energy. And then the third thing you should put on your calendar is your one thing. The vast majority of us, the one thing is lead generation or client creation time, which again, by the way, that's not, don't, when you hear me say lead generation, that is not a fancier way of saying, put on a headset and call strangers. Okay, hear that loud and clear. Lead generation is just client de development and client creation. So I spoke to somebody, um, Yesterday, for example, that we looked at how many uh, homes they intended to close in the next 12 months. And then the next question was, well, how many people are you currently courting, right? How, who's in your pipeline? And there was almost as many people in the pipeline as the goal for the year, right? So th this particular person, um, their main task is not go find a ton of strangers by cold calling. Their main task is making sure that all those deals go to, go to the end, right? And in doing so, they'll get a lot of referrals and they'll build their database organically, right? So if you love social media or you love open houses or you love networking groups or you love going to the gym or church or whatever, that can be lead generation. Just understand that just shooting the breeze with people, you know, and, 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 and wasting time isn't necessarily lead generation. The results got to be adding people to the database that might need help in the future, right? Okay, um, and then everything else gets, gets its place. Probably the fourth thing I would include would be how many appointments do I need a week and when am I gonna do those appointments? Let me pencil in the time. So hey, based on my, my family's needs, um, Thursday at one o'clock and Tuesday at five o'clock are my ideal um, appointment slots. So then when you get, when you're on the phone with somebody, those just rattle off of your mouth, uh, out of your head. You know, hey, Tuesday at five or, um, you know, Thursday at 12, those, those, are, uh, those are the times I have available right now. And then it's something like, I think it's like 70% of people, if I remember the stat correctly, will agree to one of those two times. And then if they push back a tiny bit and you just repeat yourself, it moves up to 90%, right? So if you say, hey, I'm available Thursday morning or Saturday morning, and they say, well, I want to look at this property Friday night, say, um, let me look again. Right now I have Thursday morning or Saturday morning available. They're like, okay, we'll do Thursday morning. 
And if you sense that they're freaking out, then you got one of two choices. You can either let somebody else help it and keep your schedule and build that muscle of sticking to your, your, your parameters, or you can potentially make an adjustment in your calendar. But don't get in the habit of letting your client dictate, you know, oh, we're gonna go look at homes on Saturday. Uh, 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 no, no, no. So that means I can't do anything on Saturday and I'm just waiting around to see when you wanna see homes? No, we're looking at homes Saturday from 12.30 to 1.15 and then I'm going off with my day. See what I'm saying? But Bill, Don't be it, so nonchalant. Bill, isn't that easier said than done though? Like if you no. need business though, aren't, what if you have this sense of feel like, oh, these clients could leave me if I, if I tell them, hey, if I make them feel like I'm sticking to my schedule and whatever their needs are. It's, it almost sounds like whatever your needs are don't matter right now. This is my schedule. I feel you, like you're you want me to answer that honestly, right? Yeah, I do. I think that's in your head. Okay. Well, your clients don't need to know if your commitment is to you or to other clients. That's also true. Right. So you're just telling them when you're available. Hey, I'm available at this time or this time. And so if you're like, we set aside this much, I mean, I'm not speaking from a lot of experience but in this field, but I'm speaking from experience in other situations. If you say, I have this time to this time available, this gives us this, we have this many houses we're gonna walk through. It's about this much drive time, that, you know, and given the schedule, if you wanna be that detailed, otherwise just like this is how much time we have. But if you say, I have a commitment starting at this time, so I wanna make sure that we get through as much as I can with you in this time that we have, if they have the expectation up front and they understand that you have something else, they're gonna respect that because they're gonna know that you're gonna hold that same commitment to them with other people. That's also a good point. And, and by the way, like, I think it's presupposed. There's a presupposition that you are not their only client, right? When you call, when you call, um, let's say the, um, I mean, I, I can I can distinctly remember is about a year ago, and we just got our physicals. My wife and I got our physicals, and um, we went to check out, <clears throat> and they said, um, "When would you?" Oh no, it was. I think we went in for something else. It wasn't a physical, and we scheduled our physicals for the following year. Okay, and the physicals were supposed to be in like April or something, right? And they said, okay, well, the next available appointment we have is next July. It was like a, over a year away. Over a year away. Now, I know it's a little different, but anytime you, act, if you call to get your nails done, or you call to get a massage, or you call to get a chiropractic appointment, or you call to get any type of appointment, they give you a couple slots and you pick one. And then if you respond by saying, well, I need to see you today, or I'm going to find a different agent right? Well, you can make a decision on whether you want to work with that jerk or not, right? But Kim, if you're working primarily with people that are in your world, right, that are warm referrals from friends or family or friends or family themselves, um, or people that you know from, um, you know, just your social circles, uh, they understand you have other things going on. You just tell them what you got, right? Now, understand that it's a pretty hot market, right? So if somebody calls up and says, hey, did you see 123 Hill Street just came available? And can I see it today? Then you should probably have a little bit of flex time in your schedule each day to, to tend to that stuff, right? And then you have to make a decision, right? Um, on moving a couple things around, or maybe that's the day that you generate leads at night, or maybe that's the day that you do your script practice at night, right? So you, 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 you can, you have to get good at recognizing when something's an emergency or not. Yes, that's going to be my biggest issue because I am the high I ass and I'm a people pleaser and that people can run me ragged easily. I can get burned out very easily. So, so um, can I, can I, um, would you like being vulnerable for one second in front of 15 people? Sure. How's that working out for you? It's exhausting. <laughs> it's really I know. exhausting. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well, um, would you be open to trying something different? Me? Yeah. Okay. I'll try it. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm 54 now, so let's see if it'll work now. <laughs> no, I let let it go on the record. I did not ask that woman's age. <laughs> Um, uh, well, here's the thing, like, if, if you've been behaving a certain way, right. and you're not getting the results that you desire, well, let's try a different way. Worst case scenario is you try it, it doesn't work, and you switch back, right? But I, I believe that um, there's a, it's, it's, it's empowering. Like, I called, for, uh, for, I actually borrowed my wife's phone a few minutes after I had the coaching moment with the with the person I was telling you about earlier, and I called that person to test her. Hey, is she gonna answer this phone or not? Didn't answer the phone. I, I bet she felt awesome. You don't have to identify yourself, by the way. Um, okay, so let's do a little bit of uh, housekeeping. <clears throat> Today, we have our um, uh, growth session at 11. We did uh, make a little change on that, so if you are in that like four unit a year or higher, I'd like to meet with you at 11 o'clock today. I've got a lot of really important stuff to talk about. So please, please make sure you're on the call. Um, from 2 to 3.30 today, we're going to do a session on pricing and a mock offer. Okay, pricing and a mock offer. So there's going to be a lot of screen sharing. We're going to look at pictures together. We're going to run some numbers together. I'm going to kind of walk you through um, some different pricing analyses. analyses and look at it from a number of different ways. Then we're gonna put all that data aside and go through an offer together and build out the offer and I'll walk you through how all that works too. So that'll be in this room from two to 3.30. Um, tomorrow, I highly recommend that you take part in uh, Andy's um, morning session, um, which does mean you need to reschedule your lead gen. So from nine to 10.30, Dave Jinks is going to be leading a class on um, that's exactly why list with me, the power of words. Dave Jinks is, um, been a real estate executive for forever. Um, and he's one of the co-authors, authors of the millionaire real estate agent. Um, tomorrow we're also going to have an all group session from three to four. And then Friday we have our special guest, as you know, is going to be Robin Lemon, the new assistant team leader. She's going to be joining us, uh, from 12 to one on Friday. And then our launch mastermind will be one to two on Friday. Uh, don't forget that um, the final day of reporting is actually going to be Friday night. So you got a couple extra business days um, in the last week of the of the month. You guys are doing really, really strong. Um, if there's any areas where I see just a little bit of drop from uh, last month, it is in, um, uh, on, honestly, in total contacts, right? Just getting that number up, just having more and more conversations, okay? Okay. Um, uh, but the numbers are really good. One, one of my favorite numbers is you guys are re doing really good at the number of appointments set versus held. So what that tells me is that you're bringing value on the telephone and you're creating uh, a, a reason for them to show up for the appointment, whether it be on Zoom or, on, or in person. Okay, so great job on that. Um, I'll end with um, an idea that... Um, uh, I was, or Aubrey said it during our morning huddle yesterday, and he actually said it during the team meeting. I was hoping to, to steal it. Um, now you know I'm stealing it. But it, the rule of life, the three rules of life, okay? If you don't go after what you want, you will never have it. Okay? Second rule, if you um, don't ask, the answer is always no. Okay? And the third rule is if you do not step forward, you will always be in the same place. Okay. Uh, many of us got our real estate license because we wanted to uh, in increase the quality of our lives, whether that meant um, have more time, freedom, financial stability, flexibility, control. How are we using our time? How you use your time will be the single biggest indicator of how successful you are. So I know I dropped a lot of stuff on you today that would probably put you in outside of your comfort zone. Um, if you are like shaking with anxiety about letting the phone go to voicemail, let's talk about it. I'll walk you through it. I'll coach you through it. Um, but maybe give it a shot. See how it feels, okay? Be in control. There's very few emergencies in real estate. Very few, 
Okay. Hey, Bill, I'm sorry. I missed it. Are you still doing the two to three pricing and mock offer today? I am. It's, uh, it's probably going to need to be a little longer. I've got two to three thirty on the schedule. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. So please tune into that. Um, and then lastly, uh, if you're, if you have, if you're a little fuzzy on what your big rocks are and you want a little refresher course on, uh, your MREA2 document, just call me or text me and let me know and I'll help. I'll walk you through that part too. Okay. Hey, Bill, you sent out something and I can't find it. Um, Andy was doing, they're doing a, uh, is now the right time to buy a home thing? It's a, oh yeah. Um, Hang on, I'll have to find it too. Um, can we? I don't think we, I sent a link. I think I just sent the um, the the note about it. Let me let me look at his Facebook. No, there profile. was there was a link, but can we sign up for that, or is that just for his clients? Uh, I think you can sign up for it. You can tell him I sent you. Um, okay. Uh, it's my understanding. I mean, he posted it publicly, so I would expect there to be. Um, you know, some, some agents on that call too. I mean, it probably makes everyone feel better about it just because, um, hang on one second. I, let me see if I can post the, the link. The more people that are there, the more, you know, kind of energy is around for the, for the, uh, for the future prospects, you know? So it is tomorrow from six to seven. And I Could will you send, send you that? the link through WhatsApp right Thank now. You. Okay. Um, I, I do, by the way, I do highly recommend that you pop onto this call because this is a, um, a phenomenal use of the, the technology of the day. And um, remember, this is also a, essentially, an ex if you will, I don't want to call it an excuse to call people, but it can very well be an excuse to call people, right? Hey, I'm doing a, um, a home buyer seminar. There's a lot of information out there, a lot of misinformation about there. We're just going to go over um, some of the facts and talk about some of the opportunities in the marketplace right now. Join me on Zoom from six to seven. Okay. All right. I just posted the link. Um, don't forget, I also posted the link for Bold, which starts next week, and the link for the HPX Life class called Reignite Your Life. That is free, and that's through a, um, a kind of a personal development guy named Brendan Bruchard. Okay. All Thank right. You. YouTube is updated. Go check out everything there and uh, appreciate everyone being on the call this morning. Have a good day. Thanks, Bill. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Have a great day.